by the time I was 10, I was probably bringing in three, maybe four grand a month. <laughs> so I think I probably blew through about 200 grand by the time I was like 15 years Dude, old. that's <laughs> insane. I think anybody can build well. I it, think that's the key word right there. In all business and everything in life, you have to be... All right, welcome to Flying High with Cam. I got my good buddy, Austin, with me. We just met like six weeks ago, and I feel like we've seen each other almost every week since, man. <laughs> we have. We've got a lot of cool things going on. I'm excited to dive into who you are. When I first met you, I was on your podcast, and you got to ask all the questions, so I'm excited to dive into you and what you're doing. I told you you're living my dream of being in real estate, and you're crushing it, and then I admire you with your brand and what you're doing with your podcast as I start to embark on that myself and so i'm really excited to get into it today man i appreciate you having me man yeah i, I, I admire everything you build and man I, ever since the day i met you i've talked very highly of you to anybody I've, <laughs> I've come across so yeah it's a pleasure to be here i appreciate it man well i want to start off with who you are as an entrepreneur i'm mean, like kind of a little sneak peek you have over 150 agents for those people that don't know you what you're doing in real estate is absolutely phenomenal we're going to start doing some stuff together that i'm really excited about but let's take us back to when you were eight years old. You talk about that first job that you have, and you mentioned a couple other things in between that I want to dive into, but yeah. where did it all start with? Yeah, you know, I grew up in my grandparents' garage, and, and uh, you know, I, did, I came from nothing pretty much, you know. Um, and, you know, my grandparents, they they owned a pool company at the time, and, and they didn't have a lot of money. They, you know, they made, you know, yeah. 60 grand, 70 grand a year, whatever. Um, but they had time freedom, and I saw that as a little kid. I saw that... You know, my grandpa was able to do, uh, you know, run his company on his own time, right? And if there was a holiday or something, you know, he was able to take time off and kind of like live his life. And yeah. um, and I felt like I was always like a little bit ahead of my age, you know, and and I was kind of, you know, had some trauma, right, growing up like everybody. And um, so, anyways, at about eight years old, my grandpa started teaching me how to clean pools. And, uh, Did you, you have know, any brothers or sisters, or was I it have, just you? Yeah, I have a sister. She grew up with my mom primarily. Okay, um, so, so you went with your grandparents, your sister stayed with your mom. Yeah, okay. my sister stayed with my mom. Now, fast forward to today, I actually have a pretty good relationship with my mom and my dad. Okay. Uh, they're both still around. They're divorced, obviously. But, you know, when I was a kid, it was just a dysfunctional, like, kind of family. And so I ultimately ended up with my grandparents, you know, and, yeah. and they were amazing. I mean, I don't regret anything that happened. I mean, I'm so grateful to have had that uh, opportunity, you know, and uh, but that really forced me into the world of entrepreneurship, right? I I started cleaning pools and, and learning the game, right? Of, Which at eight years old, eight, man. my little boy's 10 and I don't, like, maybe he'd get through two pools right now. Uh -huh. So, dude, by the time I was 10, I was probably bringing in three, maybe four grand a month what? at 10. Wait, yeah. and your grandpa would let you keep it? All of it. Okay. Yep. And so, you know, grandparents, right? They, yeah. they, they're like, uh, <laughs> they're the people that, like, feed you crap. You're not supposed to eat and all that, right? So I grew up <laughs> with that type of environment. So... Um, fortunately, uh, and unfortunately at the time, you know, uh, I didn't have a lot of, uh, people telling me what to do, right. I was able to kind of, you know, do what I wanted. And, um, for the most part, you know, and so, uh, I blew all my money, you know, I what, but what were you spending four grand on on as, as a 10 year old, everything you could imagine. I, uh, <laughs> I, dude, I bought every go pad, go car. Okay. Now I you're got, speaking my language. I man. got into like airsoft. I got into paintballing. I got into, like, literally, you name it, like, uh, you know yeah. the little RC cars? Yeah. Back? You yeah. remember the ones that ran on, like, Nitro? Yeah. They were, like, 110 yeah, octane. Yeah. yeah, they go, like, 80 miles an hour. I had, like, 10 of those. I, I mean, <laughs> literally everything you could imagine. And your I, grandparents were like, hey, let's start saving a little bit. They're just, yeah. hey, your money, your, you do your thing. They're, your money, you do your thing, you know? And Dude, my grandpa awesome. would, like, do it all with me. So, like, if I bought, like, a toy car, my grandpa would buy one, too, like, he was like my buddy, you know, yeah. and, um, and man, it was just a, a heck of a childhood, you know, <laughs> and it wasn't until I got older that I really actually started learning how to save my money, you know, and, and, uh, you know, I've, I've told people in the past, like, sometimes I regret that because I, like, looking back, I've done the math a couple of times. I think I probably <laughs> blew through about 200 grand by the time I was like 15 years Dude, old. That's, that's <laughs> you know? insane. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, I had a, a good childhood. I learned a lot. And uh, had a lot of fun, and, and you know, I wouldn't be the man I am today if I didn't do that, right? Would your grandpa drive you to the pool? He would or would drive. You walk? Well, so when I was a little kid, he would drive me. So uh, we would take his truck, 
he and he drive. just said, "Hey, hey, you yeah. you take the money. Like, you earn the money today. This, yep. I don't need it. This is you. You get." Well, it. I started building my own route. Okay. So he had his route, right? <laughs> and then I built my own route on top of that. So, um, oh like, he would go do his pools, and then I, and then after he was done doing his, he would take me to do mine. Yeah, what but a they cool were route. they That's were my cool. own. It was my own route that I, you know, I would go like knock doors and. I would get referrals, and it's like I was building my own little pool company, you That's know. That's sweet. And uh, by the way, this is amazing. What we're doing. This is really cool. How many times have you done this? Quite a few, <laughs> but it never gets old. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, man, it was an awesome childhood, and and I, that really taught me, you know, work ethic, right? And like earning my money, and and um, you know, really taught me how to how to grind, right? And how to how to, uh, you know, make my own money and, and live on my own terms. And that ultimately is what got me to where I'm at today. Would you charge like what your grandpa, what your grandpa was charging or would you be like 20 bucks cheaper? What? No, I would charge the same amount. Just like, yo, yeah. uh-huh. dude, that's cool. Yeah, man. And people uh-huh. really trusted me. You know, a lot of, a lot of them, uh, <laughs> like definitely in the very beginning, like I had to like earn their, their like yeah. trust, you know, but once I started to do their pool and they, they saw that like I took care of it really well and. Uh, made sure that it, it was always taken care of, then they ultimately trusted me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What the heck? That's, you yeah. didn't, I didn't know that, man. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. So you did pools from eight years old until 15, 14 or? Yeah, about 15. Um, and if you do the math, I, I'd have to do the math again, but so that was right around the time where the market was starting to get a little weird. Okay. And, you know, and I was kind of over it at that time. Again, I was a kid, right? And, and, it's um, already working seven years at yeah. 15. So I ended up, uh, I ended up getting out of that. I ended up selling uh, my accounts. Actually, I didn't make a ton of money. I probably made like five or ten grand um, selling them to some other pool company at the time. And then I ended up actually just going and getting a job. So my first ever real job was at a dry cleaner. Okay. And uh, hated my life, you know. Um, and it didn't yeah, work there. All very of a sudden, long. you have to be there for certain hours, oh, and you're gosh. not making that much money. Yeah, I hated it, you know. And. And uh, so I ended up working a bunch of jobs that I didn't like, kind of just would end up working there for like a month or two or three. I would end up quitting, getting another job, kind of same pattern, right? Yeah. And then and then ultimately uh, at probably about 17 or so, maybe just under 18, I ended up getting into MLM, so network marketing. Yeah. And um, ended up meeting a lot of really, really cool people. And I would actually recommend for anybody like young to like try out MLM. Okay. Um, because of the personal development that you get. So like you're in, the first person I've ever heard say that. Yeah, dude, because you're getting free personal development. So all these MLM companies, if there's one thing they're good at, they're really good at personal development, right? Okay. And you go to all these like free events and you get to like go listen to like a lot of these like uh, MLM companies will bring in, you know, guys like Tony Robbins and like at the time like they brought in like Bob Proctor and Linda okay. Proctor and um, John C. Maxwell and all these like different, you know, like uh, public figures and right. you end up getting all that information for That's free. That's cool. Yeah. You know? That makes sense. And uh, so that was the best thing that ever happened to me because that really was the, the first time ever, like the pool company taught me that I could work for myself and make money, right? Yeah. But MLM taught me that there's no limit to the amount of money I can make. Okay. I really learned because I, I was hanging around people that were making, you know, a hundred grand a week. You know, and they were only five or ten years older than I was, and and it really opened my eyes to like, wow, there's like a, a an abundance of money in the world, and if I just change my mindset, like I could do anything I put my mind to, you know. And, and you're that, 17 right now. Yeah, I was 17. That's crazy. And that really was that pivotal shift, you know, uh, the the paradigm shift, you might call it, that really changed the trajectory of my life forever. It was that moment in time where I realized. Anything I put my mind to, I could achieve it if I give it enough time and enough hard work, you know? Dang. So, I mean, for those people that are listening that didn't have that experience to start pools at a young age, how do you, if you're 18 years old working in a corporate job and you're wanting to jump out, how do you get that that level of confidence that you're talking about if you didn't go through what you did? I think you just have to throw yourself into personal development, you know? In today's day and age, you know, you got to remember back then, right? YouTube wasn't around, you know, like the only way that you got that was by getting in a ballroom with that guy up on stage, you know, and, yeah. and, and being there, right? But nowadays, you know, I can go subscribe to a lot of that content, right? Yeah. And I can uh, get access to that content, you know, like in a like the snap of a finger. And I think people, before anything, I think everybody should do personal development. I think, unfortunately, you know, what 
uh, like and is that in all aspects of life like i believe like leadership training or sales training or what what does that look when you say personal development if i'm 18 years old wanting to jump out or i'm 30 years old wanting to start like what are you saying to to focus on or just everything before you jump in anything so whatever you want to get better at right so i think there's like five main pillars to life so i think you have uh, you know, like finance, like business. I think you have faith. I think you have family. I think you have your uh, relationships, like your monogamous, yeah. like your your wife, your um, you know whatever. And 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 so you have all these areas of life, right? And I think any area that you want to improve in, you have to develop yourself in that area. And so I think if somebody's looking to make more money, then you have to evolve your level of thinking because. The, the gap between where you're at and where you're trying to go is just simply a lack of knowledge typically, right? Or a lack of time. It could be time or knowledge yeah. or a combination of the two, right? And um, in order to obtain that knowledge, sometimes you have to learn new information and you might even have to unlearn old information. And people forget about that one, right? Like we all grow up in a family. We're all raised by somebody, right? It might be your grandparents. It might be your parents. It might be your brother, your sister. Somebody raised you if you're listening to the podcast and um, that person is most likely a very good person and they love you dearly, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they have the life that you want to live when you get older. And I think at some point we have to take a step back, right? Like I loved my grandparents and I loved my parents, but at the end of the day, like my grandpa and grandma, they made 70 grand a year. And so in all the ways that they taught me how to like love and be loved and, and there's so many amazing things that they gave me, like I could have never gotten to the point where I'm at today making 10, 15 million a year. Um, at 28 years old if I would have taken financial advice from my grandparents. And yeah. I think we have to be very careful that we're taking advice from people that have what we want. Somewhere along the way, I think what happens with a lot of younger people is that they're taking advice only from their parents. And a lot of times, unfortunately, their parents aren't living the life that they want. And their limiting beliefs are being transcended onto you. Right. And you have to unlearn a lot of that information. And that can be really hard for people that are 18 years old Because a lot of times they're actually going to get a lot of pushback from their family, right? Yeah. Because their family, they don't know any better. They're just, they're they're not. Don't take that risk. Don't do that. Don't, And they're not trying to do anything wrong, right, Cameron? They're They're trying to protect you. They're trying to protect you, right? They're only coming from a place of love, you know, but you have to be able to separate that. You have to be able to look at that for what it is. And, um, you know, you have to be able to, at some point, if you want to be successful, if the people that raised you aren't at the level that you're trying to get to one day, then you have to be able to draw the line in the sand eventually and say, listen, I love you guys. Thank you so much for raising me. i always love you for the rest of my life, but I'm going to make my own decisions when it comes to going and trying to, you know, uh, make something of myself, you know? What made you so, I don't know if like money hungry is the right thing, but at eight years old, there's a lot of kids that don't care about money. Was it because... Like you said, you did you didn't grow up with much, and you you wanted a lot, or like what what gave you that drive to want to go clean those pools? If you're making three or four grand a month, you're probably at what forty pools, yeah, I was, 40, 50 yeah. pools. Uh huh. Well, That's we did a lot, lot of we pools did a lot of to repairs clean. too. So okay, um, even probably, thirty pools, yeah. you have to go clean one pool. Uh, well, no, because they're weekly you're cleaning, cleaning weekly, so yep. at least five pools a day, yep. right? Like, that's a lot for an eight year old. Yeah, I would get out of school every day and go clean them. You know. So what yeah. made you want to? go do that to make this money when I'm sure your grandparents would feed you at night. Yeah. Come on. I wanted to be the guy with the, with the dirt bike and the quad and the, and the go-kart and the, and the airsoft gun and the paintball gun. <laughs> okay. If Banks, my little boy had 10 pools or five pools a day to go do after school, that gets old. Like that's hard work. That's, that takes encouragement. That takes motivation. And I think that's one of the greatest things from what you're telling me that your grandparents distilled upon you is yeah. that, they didn't give you any limiting beliefs. Hey, you're eight years old. You want to go make some money? Go open up a pool route and knock on the door and say, hey, I'll clean your pool for 80 bucks a month or whatever. Yep. That's exactly. crazy, man. Yeah, and I, and I you know, uh, man, I'm so grateful for that, right? Uh, I wouldn't be the man I am today without them, and, and they're truly phenomenal. And I know that everybody doesn't get to, to have that, and everybody's childhood is different, you know? And But you take the good with the bad, right? And you make you – make, you, you just have to, everybody has their own version of trauma, right? Yeah. And as much as I'm talking about all the good, there was a lot of bad, right? I mean, at the yeah. end of the day, you know, as a kid, I, I didn't understand. You know, there was a lot of times where I wanted to have a normal family, quote unquote. I wanted to yeah. live with my mom and my dad. And, I and, and you know, so, you know, I, but I ultimately chose to focus on the good, right? And I chose to look at the positive. And, and especially now that I've gotten older, 
you know, all I do is just look at the positive that came from all of that, right? Yeah. Whatever hand you're dealt, you know, you have to, you, that, there's nothing you can do about that, right? We're all dealt a different hand, and all we can do is take the hand that we're dealt and play that hand to the best of our ability. And surround yourself, like you said, with people that, one, have been where you want to go, or two, can motivate you or not hold you back and encourage you to get there. Exactly, man. Yeah. I, I want to fast forward a little bit yep. because... I think one topic that I found that's common with everybody is that they're intrigued with people that have been able to scale their businesses in a large number like you have with your realtor pro, with your realtor business, yeah. right? You're at 150 agents. And I know, at least for me, it's like, dude, I just kept working every single day and all of a sudden, you know, I had 100 trucks. Can you go back and pinpoint like maybe a turning point that helped you scale or someone was listening and they're wanting to scale their business. How do you scale? Yeah. Yeah, you know, and that's just one of the many companies that we Should we, we go own, see right? some snow real quick, yeah, man? I'm down. But there's a little bit left. I love it. Um, yeah, you know, this is one of the companies that I own too, right? I also We're also the second largest wholesaler in the nation. We've got another 30 or 40 people um, in that company. That you know, So overall, I have over 200 people between all the companies, right? I think at the end of the day, the, the turning point for me was that, like, I knew that if I just kept showing up every single day and outworked everybody, because here's the thing, I didn't go to college, right? I, I graduated from high school, obviously, um, and got my diploma there, but I knew that, I knew what I had going for me was my work ethic, yeah. right? And I, I saw other people around me that were smarter than me. <laughs> I saw people that were better looking than me. I saw people that were taller than me, that could <laughs> jump higher than me, right? But all the things. All the things, you know. But I knew at the end of the day, the one thing that I could control, right, was I could freaking get there earlier and I could stay there later, yeah. right? And I knew I could control that, right? And I did that every single day for a decade, you know. Dang. I was the first guy in and the last to leave seven days a week. Just like you, Cameron, you know, I've heard yeah. your story, obviously, I interviewed you, and, uh, you know, I worked 15, 16, 17 hours a day, every single day of my life. Yeah. I sacrificed my health at some point uh, <laughs> during that, um, you know, there was times where I sacrificed time of family, uh, there was all, all sorts of different things that I had to sacrifice in order to, to get to where I'm at today, and, and I really attribute a lot of it to my work ethic. Now, obviously, as you scale, I have to attribute a lot of that to my team, right? As right. I, as I started to build and I started to get good people around me, I can't take all the credit. I have a phenomenal team of people, right? Yeah. And, and you do as well. And, uh, you know, I would never be able to do what I'm able to do right now. You know, we're flying in a helicopter <laughs> and uh, I probably sold three or four houses since I've been up here, you know? <laughs> and, um, you know, and obviously we would have never been able to get there without an incredible team. So at some point that kind of takes a turn and, you know, they, they say it's not about what you know, but who you know, right? Okay. And, uh, you know, I think that really elevated, uh, and, and I bet on, on great people, and I trusted them, and, and obviously here we are, you know. So it was eventually working those long hours and then saying, hey, I'm going to start to trust somebody else. Yep. I'm going to hire them, see how they do, and then that just compound, compounded to compounded hiring more time. and more people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you lose some along the way, and, and bad things right. happen too, right? I mean, I I think uh, I lost count at some point, but I've talked a lot about it. I think... I think probably in my career I've hired roughly probably about thirteen to fifteen hundred people. Right. Um, you know, and I only have two hundred now, right? So you got to figure if you do the math on that. Uh, right. You know, roughly eleven hundred people or so um, have not worked out, right? You know, between all the companies over the whole length of time, right? I'm, obviously, it's not just one company, you know, um, but that's a lot of failure, right? And yeah. I think people don't talk about that. You know, I've failed many, many, many times, and there's been a lot of things that I've started that didn't work. And I've lost a lot of money and, you know, I've lost millions and millions of dollars, you know, trying different things that didn't work over the years. And, uh, you, you, you know, they say that you can't fail if you don't quit. Yeah. Right. Talk to me about one of those times where you lost a couple million bucks. Like, yeah. What was the most painful lesson that you had? Well, one of them was, uh, <laughs> I, I technically didn't lose a lot of money, but I'll give you one funny example. So, uh, about two years ago, I had uh, like 53 Bitcoin. And uh, I sold all my Bitcoin at like seven grand a coin. <laughs> and like a month later, it went to like 50 grand a coin, you know? Right. So that was about $4 million that okay. I, didn't, uh, I didn't capture didn't there. That on. Yeah, I was uh, pretty upset about that. My ATM company, right, I, I, we built that. I technically, you know, could have made a lot of money probably doing that. I ended up just giving it to my partner. I mean, I think he gave me like 100 grand or something. I can't remember. 
Uh, yeah. But I was over it at the time, right? And it was probably worth a lot more money. Um, I could have definitely made a lot of money if I would have stayed in that. But at the time, I was just in a bad... I wanted to just get out. And I was just over it, right? And so I pretty because much... Because of real estate was picking up or yeah. what? Yeah. Well, what happened was um, I got to this point where as an entrepreneur... You know, I owned multiple real estate companies, and I also owned the ATM thing, and I, I did uh, own a marketing company for a while, and I did some other stuff. And I started to notice that, you know, they say uh, there's an old saying, if you chase two rabbits, you'll catch neither, right? <laughs> and um, I started to feel that, right? I started yeah. to feel like, man, I feel like no matter what I do, you know, I'm like, I'm dropping the ball, right? Like if I, if I'm over here working on my ATM company, it, like my real estate company suffering. And if I'm working on my real estate company, my ATM company suffering. And if I'm and and I really just got burnt out, you know, and, and I was like, man, maybe, maybe I'm doing it wrong. Like maybe I just yeah. need to go all in on the real estate thing. And, and then what I ended up realizing later on the, down the line was I could run multiple companies at one time. But they all had to kind of vertically integrate. They all had to kind of be in the same kind of like wheelhouse, right? Yeah. And so like, for example, real estate and ATM had nothing, had nothing. to do with, with each other, right? Uh -huh. Totally different industry. They didn't benefit one another. And so um, I made the conscious decision of I'm going to get out of any company that I own that isn't vertically integrated, right? Yeah. And uh, and until I'm Tony Robbins and I have, you know, a thousand employees, I am not going, I'm going to say no to any opportunity that can't be vertically integrated to some degree with what I'm building. How long ago was that decision? About th uh, two and a half, three years ago now. And is it the right decision so far right One now? One million percent, yeah. yeah. We've grown exponentially. I mean, we... We'll do eight figures this year, uh, if not multiple eight figures, you know, between the companies. And, and I really believe that we're on track to do, um, you know, I think eventually it's, uh, there's a couple of companies that we're building. We'll eventually probably be able to get acquired. Um, but, you know, I mean, heck, I mean, even if we just did multiple eight figures a year, I'd be very, very, uh, oh, I'm grateful. And with when anything. you say multiple, like in between your mortgage company and your real estate company or, or yeah. in the different real estate, and why, di why do you have so many different real estate companies? Why isn't it all rolled up into one? Well, they all do different things. You know, they all are owned by the same holding company, right? Okay. So I have a holding company that owns about 10 different companies. And uh, they're all vertically integrated to some degree. But each company technically has their own P&L, and they do a different... They perform Even if a it's different, wholesaling and, and, and retail. Yeah, because it's, retail. it's just completely different. Totally I don't know different. if it, Okay. Yeah, so wholesaling is the, is the, uh, the act of getting a property under contract below market value and then assigning that contract to a cash buyer for a profit, right? Okay. Which is, uh, so there's no representation involved in that. You're not acting as a realtor in any way, shape, or form. It's simply a, an LLC purchasing a property from an individual and then reassigning that contract to another entity, right? So another. why wouldn't you have that as just like a separate department within? Well, it is. It is a different department, but, you know, like each, uh, some of these companies I have some different partners in. Okay. And then... Um, and, 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 you know, just the way that we run all the P&Ls and everything. Yeah, it, just it, curious. Yeah. Um, it's just ultimately how we set it up. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What are we, we, it's probably at the top of my mind because we just did a podcast about it and that is debt and leveraging yourself with debt. Are, do you encourage debt? Are good. you against it? Yeah, great question. What are your thoughts on it? I, I like good debt for sure. I'm definitely not Dave Ramsey, you know. Um, I believe that, in order to really get ahead in life, you have to take on debt at some point. You, I, well, I, should, I, I guess I should say, if you really want to like, you know, get to the big leagues, right, then you're going to have to eventually take on some form of debt. I mean, even if you want to be a real estate investor, I mean, what are you going to do, pay cash for every house? I, yeah. mean, it, I mean, you could do that. I know people have done that, but by the time you're retired, you might, you might only have 10 or 15 you know, single-family yeah. houses that you've acquired, which, hey, if that's your goal, then great, right? Yeah. You know, for me, I want to own 10,000 houses um, it, as my goal, right? Or 10,000 doors. Okay. That might be multifamily. Personally things. or with partners or just... Either one. Okay. I think some of that portfolio will be just me personally. As rental properties yep. for you. And then a piece of that. I'll probably, I'd like to personally own about 1,000. So what's then, your formula for that? So if you're making, let's just say, 50 grand a month, are you saving that to put 20% down? Do you try and keep 30% down on homes? What's what's your formula and how many are you buying if you're making 50 grand a month? Yeah, we want to try to, uh, so this year I'd like to acquire, 
we, we kind of took a pause over the last couple of years on acquiring because we were so focused on getting the companies to where they needed to be. Okay. Um, so 2024 will be the first year and probably about two years that we'll start acquiring again. But you and, personally, if you're making personally 50 grand or if someone's listening or you're giving advice yep. and, or let's say that's 20 grand. Would you encourage someone that's making twenty grand a month? Let's say their bills are at five thousand yep. dollars. Would you encourage them to buy real estate and a rental property? And how yeah. much? How much would you put down? I know banks mostly require what twenty percent. You probably need twenty or twenty-five percent to do like DSCR. So would you encourage someone to put down twenty-five percent or save up to thirty, thirty-five percent, give themselves a little cushion? No, I think you're fine. I mean, look, it, it's a, you make money in the buy, right? So if you're if you're really if you really know what you're doing, and if you don't, you need to go learn. But if you know what you're doing, then you, the whole idea is to buy property with equity already built in. So why come to the table with more than 20% if you don't have to, right? Okay. Like when we're buying properties, I'm buying them 50 or 60% of, of market value, right? So day one, I already have 40% equity without putting any money down. Yeah. Right? So the idea is that if I put another 20% down on top of that, you know, I already have 50% equity in wow. that deal day one, right? Yeah. And so you make money in the buy, so I would encourage anybody... You know, you've got to make sure it's a really cool drop off there. Um, <laughs> so that's superstitions. I don't know if you know where you're yeah, at or not. <laughs> that's pretty dang cool. Um, so you gotta you gotta be able to buy a property right. You know, if you're gonna buy an investment property, you don't want to pay market value, right? I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend that at least. I mean, I would recommend get good at at knowing how to find a good deal, right? And is that a service that you offer or not really? Yeah, we teach people how to do that. Yeah. You teach or if like an investor wanted to come to you and say, hey, I want a couple, I want to buy five properties over the next 12 months, you'll feed them the deals. We'll feed them the deals. Yep, so that's our wholesaling company. Yeah, so if we, someone's making 20 grand, they got to put down, Baverage Homes, what, 400 grand? Yeah, in, in Arizona, yeah, probably 350, 400 right now. So yeah. they need to save up a couple months and then you would encourage them to dump everything into it on that down payment. I would, yeah. And what a mortgage on eight on a four hundred thousand dollar house is six uh, four, four to five hundred. A uh, mortgage on a uh, four hundred thousand dollar house would be uh, what twenty five hundred uh, three grand a month probably right now. Dang. Yeah, but you. I mean, that's you, that seems pretty cheap for putting it down. And rent will go for like four or forty five hundred or yeah, less. Yeah, just depending on where where you're at, probably a little less than that. Okay. Um, Arizona. So right now, you need to you need to buy really good deals because the the debt market. It has changed, right? And so right now with the debt market the way that it is, it, in, in, a, in a state like Arizona, it is going to be very difficult to cash flow right now. Okay. Right? Because you're paying 7 or 8% on your money, right? Yeah. And so um, you, you either need to get a really good deal and, and build in a bunch of equity by just finding a good deal, right? To drive that PMI down, or the PITI, I mean, uh, you know, principal interest taxes and insurance, right? You got to drive that number down if you want to cash flow. Okay. Now, you know, another thing you can do um, if, if you're in a state like Arizona is you can, you could uh, basically just make sure that, uh, you know, you're breaking even and then wait till interest rates go back down and then just Too refinance fine. and then you'll end up cash flowing at that point in time too. Um, the other option you could do right now is if you are in a market like Arizona, maybe go to a different market right now. You know, go somewhere like uh, where, you know, the cost of a house is a little cheaper, right? Uh-huh. And, and um, you know, acquire deals in that market. And, you know, like if you go somewhere, for example, like, uh, gosh, let me think, um, I mean, really anywhere like, other than a place like here in California, New York. I mean, if you went to, like, uh, Alabama or you went to uh, Atlanta, uh, Georgia, you know, if you went to somewhere like that, you know, you could buy a property for a hundred grand, Right. And you could put twenty grand down on that property, and that property would probably rent for fifteen hundred dollars a month. Crazy. And you would probably cash flow day one five hundred bucks a month on every house that you bought, on top of paying down your mortgage. Yeah. And the depreciation. Now, the downside to going to a market like that is there won't be as much appreciation over the long haul. Right. So typically, in those markets where you're going to get a cheaper property, you know, over the course of ten or twenty or thirty years, the property might not go up in value that much. Whereas somewhere like Arizona, over 10, 20, 30 years, that property will double in value probably over that length of time. So we're in a market that is way more, uh, it'll go up in value significantly more over the long haul. So, you know, so that's you, why you'd encourage, even if you're going to break even. Yeah. So what percentage of your monthly income would you recommend people allocating towards investment properties, if that's your pitch for? Yeah, yeah so for me, you know, I would, I, I would love to live... On, on a very minimal amount of my overall income, right? 
Like if I was making fifty grand a month, I would try to live on eight grand, eight to ten grand a month at the most, if I could, right? Okay. And then now you've got forty grand. Now you got to remember, you got to pay the IRS, so you got right, you know right. you got to take that into consideration, right? Then then you want to make sure you have you know some sort of money in the. I mean, you don't want to have no cash in the bank. Yep. Um, so you know, I always recommend make sure you have some cash in the bank, and then you know, I really recommend somebody probably take if you're making fifty. It costs you ten to live. Say you, uh, what are you going to pay the government? I mean, it depends on how good you are at writing stuff <laughs> off. Um, you know, you might pay. I don't know. You might pay fifteen or twenty yeah. uh, to the government, just depending on how good you are at that and where the income's coming from, right? Right. Because depending on where you know, like you might be able to write off more depending on who you are. Um, but I'd recommend probably take at least ten or fifteen grand a month and put that aside, wow. and maybe even twenty. I mean, just depending on again how what, aggressive you are, how aggressive you are, right? And and if you did that, I mean, heck. Depending on what market you're in, you could probably buy a property every 90 days. Yeah. You know? And then that'll just exponentially grow. So, like, if you bought it, if you that year one every 90 days, assuming your earned income never went up, then year two, you know, you might be able to do it every 80 days. Yeah. In year three, you might be able to do it every, you know, so theoretically, remember, uh, growth isn't typically going to be linear, it'll be exponential, right? Uh, like the compound effect, you know. Yep. If, if you read the book uh, by Darren Hardy, the compound effect, yeah, yeah, penny doubled it. every day, right? Yeah, it's crazy then, what when you it? think about that. <clears throat> day twenty-seven. It's so it, there's the old saying: uh, Would would you take a million dollars cash right now, or would you take a penny doubled every day for thirty days? Right. Okay. And it's like a penny day one, two day two is two pennies, day three is four pennies, right? And I think it isn't until day twenty-seven. Where the penny doubled every day actually will make more sense than the penny than the the million cash. Crazy uh, man. And then day twenty, like I think eight, it goes to like two million. Day twenty nine, it's like four million. You end up with like five point three million by day thirty. Which Crazy. Is, so you yeah. know, I think people just have to be disciplined, right? Like I it, think that's the key word right there in all business and everything in life. Yeah. You have to be disciplined. You do, and you know, I think anybody from any background, I don't care where you're from, I don't care where you grew up. I don't care what color your skin is. I don't care what language, you, you, you know, I don't care about any of that. If you can be disciplined for 20 years of your life, and you might even be able to do it in 10, but you could for sure do it in 20, right? I think anybody can build wealth. Anybody. You know, and I really believe that. And But you have to be disciplined, and you have to wake up every day, and you have to work toward the goal, and you have to make sure that you are, uh, you know, uh, achieving what you're trying to achieve and just make sure But you... also taking those risks that you're yeah. talking about, right? You do. Okay. Yep. And a lot of people aren't willing to take the risk, right? And, hey, you know, uh, if you're not willing to take risk in life, you're never going to achieve much. Yeah. You know, you're just not. I mean, if look, if you want to fly a helicopter, you're taking a risk, right? <laughs> we're up here. We're all three of us. We got Lexi back here. We're, we're all taking a risk, right? Yep. And um, but what was the reward? Look at the view. Yeah. Look at the reward. Imagine if you never got in an airplane or a helicopter your entire life. Well, you'd never get to see the world from the way that we're seeing it right now. I love it, man. You know, like what's the thing that you're most excited about in closing here? So you asked me a question a little while ago. You you said like where did the like drive to achieve come from, right? Yeah. And I'm gonna go back to that in answering your final question here. Okay. So when I was a kid. You know, I just wanted to make a lot of money, right? And I'll be honest, you know, I'll tell I people, I, I wanted to make a lot of money. And I think for a lot of young people, honestly, it's not a bad thing to start out with, right? Yeah. It, when you're young, it's not bad to say, hey, I just want to make a lot of money. You know, I think there's a lot of 18-year-olds that think they have to, like, cure cancer, have some big, like, why. It's like, no, dude, you could just want a Lamborghini. It's not, yeah. it's not the end of the world, right? Because what will happen is that will end up changing over time. So for me, I just wanted to make a lot of money. And then what happened was I ended up making a lot of money, and I bought a Lamborghini, and then I bought another Lamborghini. And then I was like, dude, I ain't that happy. Yeah. Like, I remember <laughs> driving down the road with my Lamborghini pissed off one day, you know? And, like, what's wrong with yeah, me? You know? And, and then what ended up happening over time is I'm like, man, I really want to, like, I really want to have a more meaningful impact on the world, right? And then I started going down to Nicaragua and building houses down there oh, for cool. people. Yeah, Dang, I didn't even know that. Yeah, I've been down there three times. Uh, building houses down there, and you know, and I started to get perspective. Right, I started to see people that were living on a dollar a day. You yeah. know, and my my entire why changed. You know, it became less about the money and more about the impact that I was making. Right, and now I think what I'm the most excited about is just to continue to impact the world. You know, like I, I got people on my team now that you know they're going to make 
a half a million dollars. So cool. Like, dude, I have a, I have a 21 year old on my team that's going to make 400 grand, you that's, know? Yeah. And like, we're talking wow. like life changing money, life altering money, right? For them yeah. and their family. And, and honest and truly, when I see that, dude, I am, I am so freaking happy, you know? And, um, I, I couldn't be happier. And, and I just want to continue to make change like that. And, and I want to go and I want to build more houses down, you know, in different places, whether it be Mexico or Nicaragua or wherever. Yeah. And, uh, you know, then eventually I want to get more into like different types of charity and I'd like to eventually have some sort of like foundation, you know, and, um, I think that is what I'm excited about. And I think for me now in business, it's less about the money and more about the game. Yeah. You know, I'm addicted to the game now. I'm addicted to, can I do it? Can I be number one? Can, it's not even about the money anymore. Well, I think that's what's drawn me to you the most since we've met. Like I said, we've only known each other for maybe it's been longer than six weeks, but you, you, your passion that you have and the sincerity that you have in business just radiates. And you can see that through your social media. You can see it if you go to your office. Your people are happy. You have a good, clean environment. And I can genuinely say that I believe when you wake up in the morning, you enjoy, like, you look forward to going to work. I do. And there's nothing better than that. Yeah, I do, man. You're so right. And I really appreciate the compliment. You know, it means the world to me, obviously. I see the same in you every day, you know. <laughs> the fact that we're up here doing this tells me you, you have a ton of passion for everything that you do, right? And uh, and I think you and me are very similar in that regard. And, and I think that, um, you know, anybody can be that passionate about something, but you just have to do something you're passionate about, right? Yep. And for me, I'm passionate about changing people's lives now. I'm passionate about, you know, what can I do to better somebody else's life? And that could be anybody. It could be my family. It could be my fiance. It could be my team. It could be people that I've never met, you know? Yeah. It could be just walking into the gas station and just smiling at somebody and just, you know, uh, just being a, a ball of light, right? Like, show up in the world and, and be the person that, that you wish that somebody would have been for you. And I believe that we all can do that. We can control that, right? And, and uh, man, yeah, I, uh, again, I appreciate the compliment, but I think anybody can do that. Um, it's something that i practiced, obviously, for a very long time. And, um, and you know, at the end of the day, we get to choose how we show up in the world, man, <laughs> you know? Well, well, I love it, bro. I appreciate you, you know, trusting me to come up and yeah. fly, taking time out of your day. And uh, I'm excited to do stuff with you this year. So Dude, appreciate you, bro. Very fired up. I appreciate you for having me. And uh, yeah, can't wait for the, the upcoming year. <laughs>